I've got a nice Ramanujan style summation to show everyone today. So it is the sum as n goes from one to infinity of n over e to the two pi n minus one. And if you wanna look at the first couple of terms, they look like this. So we've got one over e to the two pi minus one plus two over e to the four pi minus one plus three over e to the six pi minus one and so on and so forth. So you might kind of wager, will this final sum depend on e, depend on pi, depend on both, or depend on neither? I think the results are pretty interesting. We're going to use two tools as we evaluate this sum. One is like the standard geometric series. Well, the geometric series shifted a little bit. We have u over 1 minus u is equal to u plus u squared plus u cubed, so on and so forth. That's the sum as m goes from one to infinity of u to the m. And that converges when the absolute value of u is less than one. And we're gonna use another tool, which I'll reveal when we get to it. Okay, so now let's maybe start manipulating this so that we could do something with ge this geometric series. Notice that each term here looks like something that we could expand as a geometric series, and that's exactly what we'll do. So I'm gonna take this and multiply the numerator and the denominator by e to the minus two pi n. So that's gonna give me the sum as n goes from one to infinity of n times e to the minus two pi n over one minus e to the minus two pi n. So I brought that n out just to really like underscore that we're gonna look at this thing right here. But now this e to the minus two pi n, the absolute value of that, or really not the absolute value because this is always a positive number, is less than one for all values of n. So that means it can appropriately be expanded as a geometric series like this, where our common ratio is this e to the minus two pi over n. So let's expand this stuff in parentheses using our first tool here. That's going to give me something like the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of n times the sum as m goes from 1 to infinity of, let's see, we have e to the minus 2 pi m n. So now looking at this, maybe I should have taken that n on the inside of this sum. And why is that? Because right here, it looks like this is something where we've taken the partial derivative of this exponential with respect to m, and this n came down. But we're off by a bit of a constant. We're off by a constant minus two pi. So we can take care of that by multiplying by minus one over two pi. So let's see what that gives us. So I'll take a minus one over two pi out of this, and then we have the sum as n goes from one to infinity, the sum as m goes from one to infinity of the partial derivative with respect to m of e to the minus two pi m n. So taking that partial derivative brings a minus two pi out, that's gonna cancel this, and it brings us an n out, which goes right there. Okay, so from here we're going to change the bounds of summation. So that's going to give me minus 1 over 2 pi. I have the sum as m goes from 1 to infinity of the partial with respect to m and then the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of e to the minus 2 pi m n. Great. And now I'll look at what I've got. And notice that this inner sum can be summed using geometric series trick again. So my common ratio now is e to the minus two pi m n. So that's gonna give me something like this. I still have this term out front, this minus one over two pi, and then the sum as m goes from one to infinity, that partial with respect to m, now, summing this thing using geometric series trick, notice that our common ratio here is e to the minus two pi m. And let's see that like very clearly by rewriting this as e to the minus two pi m all raised to the n power. And we're summing from n goes from one to infinity. So that's gonna leave me with e to the minus two pi m over one minus e to the minus two pi m. Great. But now I can simplify that a little bit, much like I did in the first step, 
by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by e to the two pi m. So let's do that here. So multiplying the numerator by that will just cancel it. Multiplying the denominator will give me e to the two pi m minus one. And now let's take the derivative of that whole thing with respect to m. So by the chain rule, a couple of things happen. First of all, a two pi comes out to cancel this two pi. So that two pi is gone in the denominator. Then secondly, a minus sign comes out because we've got this whole e to the two pi m minus one in the denominator, again, by the chain rule there. And then we also have to take the derivative of e to the two pi m minus one. And that's gonna give us, like I said, the two pi and another e to the two pi m. So all in all, we'll get the sum as m goes from one to infinity of e to the two pi m over e to the two pi m minus one squared. Okay, so let's bring that up and then we'll finish it off. On the last board, we got our sum down to this sum and now we're ready to finish this thing off. And we'll do that by first noticing that if we multiply the numerator and the denominator here by e to the minus two pi m, so let's do that, e to the minus two pi m, and then also multiply the numerator and the denominator by four, so let's put a four here and a one quarter out here. That's gonna leave us with something that's a little bit easier to work with perhaps. So we have the sum, well a quarter times the sum is m goes from one to infinity of four, which is the same thing as two squared over. So bringing this inside will divide this thing by two because we've got a square there that leaves us with e to the pi m minus e to the minus pi m. But now this whole thing is squared. But I'm gonna take this square and this square, maybe put a bracket around this whole thing and then square this whole thing. And then this thing is shaping up quite nicely. Notice this, this, this thing that I've over bracketed in yellow is in fact one over the hyperbolic sine. So this is, like I said, one over the hyperbolic sine evaluated at pi times m. So that means this whole thing can be written as one quarter, and then I have the sum as m goes from one to infinity of one over the hyperbolic sine squared evaluated at pi times m. That's just like by the definition of the hyperbolic sine. And you might look at this and say, we're not in any better of a position than we were when we started, but in fact we are. And that's because we can use this nice identity which I have snuck in behind me, which says the sum is n goes from one to infinity of a over the hyperbolic sine squared of a n plus b over the hyperbolic sine squared of b n is equal to a plus b over six minus one. We're not gonna derive that, but if you'd like to see it derived, I'm thinking about doing it for the second channel just to push some traffic over there. Maybe post in the comments if you'd like to see this derived. Again, this is also like something of Ramanujan. Okay, so now we can use this identity with a equal to, let's see, pi and b equal to zero, and that should do it. So that's gonna give us one quarter and then we'll have, let's see, pi over six minus one. And that's because b is equal to zero here. So in the end, we get pi over 24 minus one quarter as a final answer. And if you've liked this video, maybe consider subscribing. And I've done a lot of other technical sum type problems on the channel. There should be one on the screen right now for you to check out. And that's a good place to stop.